Hey there architects, today's video is all about annotation tools in Revit. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to add dimensions, text, tags, and callouts, and set up and print your sheets like a pro. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off. So let's say we want to annotate the plan we made. Let's start with dimensions. So align dimensions, so these are your go-to tool and they work a lot like CAD dimensions. So you want to head to the annotate tab and select align dimension and start measuring by clicking the inside edge of one wall. Then move to another point like the center line of the next wall and when you place dimensions, they automatically adjust if you move the walls. So this feature keeps your measurements accurate and aligned with your design changes. Some other dimensions include the use of angular dimensions if you want to measure angles between walls. So you just use this angular dimensions tool. We have radial dimensions. These are used for curved or circular elements. And finally, we have spot elevations. These are used for marking heights. For example, you could label your floor at 100 feet. Now let's add a bit of detail. Detail lines. Think of these like the 2D lines you use in CAD and Revit comes with preloaded line styles and it defaults to a bright pink sketch line. This is handy for base sketches and you can erase or adjust it later. But use these sparingly. They're great for quick notes, but keep your model focused on smart 3D elements. All right, we have filled regions. When you need to highlight an area, you can use filled regions and you select filled region from the annotate tab. Pick a color or pattern, let's say orange for fun, and set your line style like solid black. And there you have it. You've got a filled region. Another important detail about filled regions is that it's only seen 2D. Next up, adding detail components. Sometimes you need a quick annotation to explain something specific like under cabinet lighting. So here's how. Grab a preloaded 2D component from your template, place it in your plan, and stretch it where you need it. Remember, like filled regions, these only show up in 2D. They're great for adding quick context, but they won't appear in your 3D views. Next up, adding text notes. Start with text and click on the text tool under the annotate tab. A modify place text ribbon appears, giving you options. Text with no leader, straight or curved leaders, leader placement on either side of the text. So if you wanna place a note, choose the two segment text option and place your note. Let's say for example, note one. And now maybe you wanna customize your text. Use the properties panel to adjust styles. Add a dot or an arrow to your leader and switch the background to opaque T to clean up areas where the text overlaps other elements like dimension strings. So let me give you a pro tip. Avoid overlapping notes with dimension strings whenever possible. However, the opaque text setting is a lifesaver when overlaps are unavoidable. Next up, using tags. So tagging components. Use tag by category or tag all to label component. So say for example, click on an exterior wall and assign a preloaded wall tag like wall type one. Next up, updating parameters. If you modify a tag, let's say changing a wall type to type two, Revit will update all similar components as it's tied to the type parameter. Massing and site tools. So we have massing models. Use the massing tool for quick conceptual shapes. These are great for early stage design, but are less refined than tools in programs like Rhino. Then we have topo surface. Import CAD topography files or laser scan data to create a site. Add site elements like trees, parking lots, or other components to enhance presentations. While Revit can handle site elements well for presentations, Civil 3D is often better for detailed site designs. Next up, visualizing in Revit, adjusting, visibility, and graphics. Use the View tab to toggle visibility settings. Hide heavy weight lines by clicking the Thin Lines button or pressing TL on your keyboard. Next up, camera views. Create 3D perspective views. Select the camera tool, drag it out, and preview the space. While Revit's native renderings are basic, they're great for quick spatial understanding. Now let's move on to rendering tips. 
Revit's built-in rendering engine is serviceable but limited. For professional quality renderings, consider using plugins like Enscape, Lumion, or Twinmotion. By combining these annotation and visual tools, you can enhance your workflow and create clear, engaging designs tailored for presentations or documentation. Next up, Callout. Callouts are essential for creating enlarged plan views or detailed sections of your designs. Let's walk through how to create, name, and place callouts efficiently. Creating a callout. Use the callout tools to highlight the area you want to enlarge. So let's say, for example, a desk or a specific room. Revit automatically generates a callout head in the floor plan, but it's not linked to any sheet yet. Revit automatically names the callout as a subsection of your floor plan. So let's say, for example, floor plan callout one. So to rename, go to the project browser, find your new callout view, and rename it like plan detail one. Next up, placing the callout on a sheet. Navigate to the sheet. Open your first floor plan sheet or another appropriate sheet where you have room for the callout. Adjust cropping regions. And in the callout view, turn on cropping regions like viewports in AutoCAD. Resize the crop box to frame the detail properly. Drag the view onto the sheet. Drag the callout view from the project browser to the desired location on the sheet and adjust the view title and its position as needed. Next up, update indicators. Once the callout is placed, its indicator in the floor plan will update automatically. For example, if you want to rename the callout on the sheet to C1, the indicator in the floor plan will also update to match. Next up is adding sections and other views. Locate section views. In the project browser, find the section you want to add, so let's say working section, and just like the callout, drag the section view onto the sheet and adjust its position. Rename the section as needed, like D5 for clarity. Next is automatic updates. Any changes you make to section or callout titles on the sheet will instantly reflect in the plan indicators. So some pro tips for efficiency. Use templates. Preloaded templates save you time by providing ready-made tags, view settings, and layouts. Next, we have naming conventions. Follow a clear naming structure like A1, C1, D1 to keep your sheets and indicators organized. And when you want to do quick edits, you can deactivate views, adjust extents, and move titles with ease, all within the sheet view. So printing in Revit is straightforward, but requires attention to a few key settings to ensure your sheets look professional. So let's break it down here. Accessing the print dialog. So the shortcut for this is press Ctrl P to open the print dialog box. Next up is selecting a printer. Choose your printer. If you're using a PDF printer like Bluebeam PDF, select it from the list. And choosing what to print, set print range. Decide whether you want to print specific views or sheets. Use the checkboxes in the dialog to turn on or off individual views or sheets. Let's say for example, you're printing sheet A101. Locate it in the list, check the box next to it, and ensure no other sheets are selected. Next up, configuring print settings. Make sure the sheet size matches your project setup. Let's say 24 by 36. Adjust scaling if necessary, like fit to page. Next up, color options. Choose between color or black and white. Revit doesn't use CTB files like AutoCAD. Instead, line weights are vector-based and embedded in your line styles. Line weight adjustments. If lines don't appear correctly, revisit your line style setting within the project to make adjustments. All right, printing and saving. Combine or separate PDFs. For single sheets, save them as individual files. For multiple sheets, combine them into a single PDF for easier batch printing. Save location. Save the PDF to your designated project folder, let's say progress PDF or final set, Revit will automatically name the file with the full file name and sheet name. So let's say project name underscore A101. You can simplify this by renaming it A101 first floor plan. So DPI settings. Use 72 DPI for on-screen viewing. For high quality prints, set the DPI to 150 or 300 depending on the detail level required. Next is reviewing the output. Open the PDF. So if you're using Bluebeam, the PDF may open automatically. Review the sheet to ensure all elements are clear and correctly placed. So as a final check, 
confirm line weights, text clarity, and layout accuracy before sharing or printing hard copies. And that's it. You now have the tools to annotate, detail, and present your Revit projects like a pro. If this video helped, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more Revit tips. See you in the next video. Bye!